In this tutorial, I will show you how to build circular rigs in After Effects from scratch. In Illustrator, you can make a radial array pretty easily. For example, if I want to make a bunch of copies of the circle and then just have them basically um, place around the circle, I can just literally use Rotate tool, holding Option, I can click and typing in uh, the total angle divided by number of copies I want to make, for example, six, give me 60 degrees, I can just make a copy and then if I press Command D, it will just simply duplicate the circle around this common point, which is just this command will repeat the previous action. So in Illustrator, it's very easy to make a radial arrays and so on. After Effects doesn't have this kind of function built in and we have to make it and we are gonna do it by simply building a rig which will behave in this principle. It will, um, our rig will use a common point and uh, we'll build a control to create radius and as well our rig will take into account number of layers we have and then it will just basically space them out around the circle using the radius. So if there's more layers, they'll be spaced out evenly using 360 degrees to cover the whole circle. So um, let's go into After Effects and hopefully this will make more sense. So as I've shown you in Illustrator, you can make circular rigs pretty easily. Now in After Effects, you have to create the whole setup yourself from scratch using expression. It's not really difficult. It requires a little bit of forward thinking, but once you have it done, they are pretty flexible. So in this example, all the layers are evenly spaced between each other, but if I duplicate them, the whole rig is just keeps adjusting to fill in, to fit all the layers within 360 degrees. And even if I have a just small number of copies, everything is perfectly spaced out. So. So by creating something like this from scratch, you can implement this on a number of ways. Uh, you can use it in a uh, future user interface design stuff, uh, heads up displays. You can create pre-comps for this um, instead of like the shape layers and replace it with images, footage, and so on and so on. Now, um, the project file will be available for download for free from Gumroad if you want to follow along or just poke around how the whole thing is set up. So how does this work? I'm gonna just delete everything. First of all, we have a control null and we have a shape layer parented to that null. So null just simply controls the animation of the whole thing going left and right, left and right. So the null has two sliders. One slider counts basically how many layers we have in this composition and the second slider controls the radius size. So basically how big your circular array will be. Now, how does this work? If I just open the whole thing up and bring up the expressionist so you can see the whole setup. It's pretty simple. In the whole setup, I'm using anchor point as um, controller for radius. So basically the anchor point on X is always on zero and Y is just being pushed up. And this way, if I link this with the radius size slider in null, if I just open this up so you can see, I can easily adjust the anchor point while position is always being referenced from the null. Now, second part of the setup is the rotation. So what's happening is, I'm using the layer count number slider to know how many layers are present in this composition, which is basically this. And at the end, I'm multiplying this rotation value by the index of this layer. So let me just uh, explain this again from the beginning. So control references the null controller, layer count a variable references this slider and then i means um, this layer's index so r is basically like radius of our circle which is 360 degrees 
and I'm calculating new ro new rotation value by using um, base R divided by number of layers in this composition times this layer index. And the last part of this setup is this um, layer count slider. So if I bring up the expressions, which is basically this layer's index minus one. Now this is important to have this node at the very bottom of the stack. So this layer count will ignore this node's index value, which is two. So basically it will count only the layers above the null itself. So if you look at, if you focus on this number, if I just keep duplicating, layer count is five. And if you look at the rotation, rotation corresponds to basically 360 degrees divided by number of layers and then times this layer index. So this one will be 144 and so on and so on until it goes full 360. This is a very flexible way of building circular arrays. And if you parent them to, for example, null itself, you can control the position very easily. You can animate the radius, so they can have like pulsating effect, rotation, as you can see. So this is, this is basically the whole setup, how you do it. And you can quickly populate this whole array, push it out, um, and yeah, everything's perfectly spaced out and so on. Now let me show you a few more examples. Now when I was playing around with this whole setup, I added a little variation. So I just duplicate a bunch of times. So for example, this design is a little bit different. I have like a little dot at the end of the triangle. Now if I play this, the objects themselves, they like counter rotating to towards the main rotation itself. So basically in this setup, what's happening is everything is exactly the same as previously. If I just open the expressions, rotation expression is exactly the same. Same with the anchor point. Now in the shape layer, you have a bunch of other properties. So dot itself is the little object. If I just zoom in over there, I added expression to the rotation property of the triangle itself. And it looks like this. So what's happening is, is basically I'm referencing the, our parent, the control layer rotation, and I'm simply subtracting it from 180 degrees. So this object, if I just keep scrolling, is staying upright. Same with these guys. They always maintain the same angle from the side. So it's kind of like little stars chasing each other and stuff like that. Okay, so it's just like a little variation. But it's as previously, this is very modular. You just duplicate layers and the whole thing is perfectly spaced out. Now, in one of the last examples, I will show you how you can use this with multiple objects, like different shapes and sizes. So for example, we have triangle and layer. And the only thing that's different in this case, I have radius size and radius size two. So one of these guys, so line is being controlled by radius size two on the, of the null layer. So what it means is you can control how the sum, you can control how some of the layers are reacting differently than the others, but they're still being spaced out perfectly from each other on a circle. So if I simply grab these shape layers and duplicate them and again, and again, so I'm simply duplicating it and using command shift and right bracket, just moving them up. So we have basically kind of like a tiramisu sandwich of layers. Okay, and everything's probably spaced out. Now with the, um, with this setup, the layer order is important. Control layer has to always be at the bottom. So we have a correct layer count, excluding this um, no control layer. And if you, for example, take you know, some of the shape layers and just move them at the bottom, they just, you can create simply groups like, like so. There you go. It's very, very easy and pretty quick to quickly modify your layers the way you want. Um, and everything is perfectly spaced out. And by adding a bunch of other controls that you have like radius size, um, you can make this really, really powerful rig. 
Now in this setup is a little bit different than the other ones. It's because as you can see, it looks exactly the same as the other layers, except I opened this layer uh, in extension graphics panel and simply I took, where are you? The radius size slider and just added it to essential graphics panel. And if I simply drag this layer here, the original source one, I can easily, if I just turn this off for a second, I can easily control this layer, this, this layer, this composition from, well, parent composition, you can call it, um, without going inside into the main comps themselves. And all it takes is just basically like a little bit of pre-planning and you can have the very quickly, pretty complex uh, rigs. And everything is like really, really responsive. And everything here is being controlled simply with a bunch of expressions. Now you know how to build circular arrays yourself. And you can use this not only with shape layers, but as I mentioned, you can use it with like footage and uh, with icons, um, different illustrations and everything else you can import into After Effects. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.